Hi everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I've improved my little recording area. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Um, I hope you do as well. Let me know what you think. Um, today, I'm gonna to be talking about a project that's received a lot of interest lately in the Twitter sphere and the crypto space in general. It's actually gonna be featured in an interview that I'm going to release tomorrow, but I thought I'd get this out first because the, the project has actually come up with some really cool announcements that I'll talk a little bit later in the video. I'm talking about Aleph, so let's do our dive into WTF is Aleph. Aleph started its genesis on the Nulls blockchain in quarter one of 2019 by incubation with the Nulls proof of credit mining system. This project started to allow Nulls users to stake their tokens to receive Aleph in quarter three of 2019, meaning that the only way to acquire these tokens was to stake on the Nulls blockchain and opt to support Alf and instead of receiving your Nulls reward, you would receive Aleph tokens. So this was actually the only way you could get the, the tokens for Aleph at the time. This is a process called Staked Coin Output or SCO. This for me is a really cool way to start a project as it relies on you to build a community who believe in what you're building and who are willing to put their money from a staking standpoint to help support you. It also means you don't rely on going to traditional fundraising methodologies like venture capitalists or private equity firms or family offices or even running an ICO. Essentially what you do is you say, hey, I wanna build a community, I wanna build this tech, are you willing to support me? And the risk to the investors is quite low because they're not risking their whole capital, they're only risking potential rewards that they would otherwise be earning from nulls. Within the first 24 hours, Aleph had already secured roughly about $2 million worth of staked nulls, which then gave them about $110,000 of nulls rewards, which was about 33,000 US dollars, which allowed the team to start building and implementing the things that they wanted to, much of which was or had already been started by the team because they were working for free essentially. This means that the tokens that were, that were given out to those initial backers were acquired at a cost of about 0.1 US cents a piece. So to put that relatively, so one tenth of a cent. To put that into today's terms, Aleph is now trading at roughly about 30 cents. So a pretty good ROI over a 12 month period. Again, as stated earlier, the good thing about something like this is that the, these people who are acquiring these really cheap tokens aren't the type that are going to pump and dump the project. Also at the time, I'll be honest, they weren't trading. So essentially people who are acquiring these tokens believed in the project, which means you're getting a community that aren't going to just dump on ICO investors or something like that, which is why I'm a really, really big fan of this, this methodology of fundraising and gaining community support. The current release of the white paper is dated on the 21st of November, 2019, well after the project had been worked on and incubated by the Nulls chain. In 2020, tokens were expanded to be made available on the NEO and Ethereum blockchains. And I'm gonna talk a little bit in the next paragraph about how that came to be. In February of 2020, Aleph acquired Picio Chain's community and product, which basically was a user-controlled personal data bank after they had shut down. So this is almost like a, a modern version of a corporate takeover. Uh, owners of Picio Chain's tokens were given ALF tokens at a ratio of one to five Picio. This is actually an interesting, interesting thing to do in the crypto space as it's quite smart because what you're doing is you're acquiring technology using your tokens to people who essentially might have probably given up on, on Picio Chain's previous project and it meant that Aleph didn't need to build them themselves and it cost them a marginal amount of tokens, uh, which, which is how we end up with, uh, with Aleph on the NEO blockchain. I will also note that there is a, a function within uh, Aleph's app where you can convert tokens from uh, nulls or NEO into the native token, which is the ERC20 token. And that can be done at a one for one ratio on their website. Things started to get interesting on the 4th of June, which is when Aleph released its mainnet. It then started trading on Uniswap on about the 8th of June at a price of 1.3 US cents, which is already quite a good return for those early backers. 
There seems to be a lot in the works in Aleph at the moment. And this isn't a shill or me saying that you should go out and purchase this token, but it seems that there's a lot of cool things happening with this project at the moment, like things being worked on, which is always positive. So what is Aleph and what is it aiming to be? Firstly, Aleph isn't a blockchain project, which for me is quite a smart thing because it means you haven't got to spend all this money trying to build a blockchain that isn't necessary. What it is, it's an, a layer two application, which means it sits above the blockchain layer. Uh, those of you who understand the internet, it's sort of like the various protocols uh, of the way that the internet works and the way it was developed, that there's all these protocols that lay between the base internet and the user. Aleph is trying to be a layer one up above the blockchain, which means that app developers can build using Aleph or build into Aleph in order to access multiple blockchains for whatever reason. So as a start, Aleph handles storage and computation tasks for dApps and then can settle or anchor those trends or those computational tasks to the underlying blockchains, which at the moment includes NEO, Bitcoin, Nulls, ETH and Binance Chain. That may sound like a bit of a mouthful to start off with, but essentially what it is, it's like a decentralized cloud allowing for you know, the silos of data that exist in, in different blockchains to be broken down and utilized by decentralized app developers. So who benefits from this? Well, at a start, something like DeFi could definitely benefit. Uh, the founder himself, Moshi, has said that he would like to see the DeFi space, or rather, he would like to see Aleph decentralize the last mile of the DeFi space. This includes things like order books, pricing information and routing engines, meaning that no longer will these, these sort of, you know, these, inf these pieces of information be siloed under one organization. So what's coming up? Well, if we check the roadmap, we can see that soon specialized hybrid nodes, whereby nodes can focus on resourcing certain dApps while also allowing the whole network to be benefited at the same time is going to be released. This is actually part of the release that came out today. Um, right now, um, you can actually create a node on Aleph if you have roughly about, I think it's 200,000 tokens and you can start your own node. And then you need enough stakers to make up a total balance of half a million tokens, which can then be used to then earn you know, various rewards from being part of the node. So this is actually quite an excitement announcement today because A, it means that a lot of tokens that are currently in the market will be locked up into nodes. And the other really big announcement is that the team actually are going to burn 50% of the token supply. So currently there's roughly about um, a billion tokens uh, out there. A lot of them are still being held by the team and they're actually going to burn half a million, which means that the potential market cap of, the, of Aleph um, has halved which means that for it to reach the same value, the token will actually need to double, which is very, very interesting and a very bullish signal for those who are involved. I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy it because by the time uh, that this video is released, um, the, the first wave would have come in. However, I think that it's also indicative that the, the team is looking out for interesting ways to benefit the community um, but also they felt that having this really massive token supply wasn't the best thing for the community. But I'll put a link to the release in the bottom of the video and you can see it for yourself and make your own decision. Uh, I'm not here to give you uh, investment advice. So later on in the year, they're looking at releasing an SDK, which is a software development kit, which will be available for the underlying chain, starting with Ethereum, allowing developers to more easily integrate into the ALF network. So how can you acquire Aleph? Well, there's a few ways, and I think uh, I'm not saying this is a way to tell you how to buy this token. However, I think that it's interesting to see how you can, you can acquire tokens. So there's three main ways. Number one is the easiest, go and buy it on one of the various exchanges. The highest liquidity is somewhere like Uniswap, um, which actually feeds into my second point. So the second way to earn LF tokens is to stake supply on Uniswap. So I'm not going to get into the real big details about how a decentralized exchange like Uniswap works. Uh, however, what you can do if you own Aleph tokens on Uniswap is that you can stake those in the liquidity pool with an accompanying amount of Ethereum, meaning that you get a share of the, um, the fees that are generated by the pool. So any trading fees that are done on Uniswap will be paid into the pool. The other thing that happens is that you also get uh, a share of 15,000 Aleph tokens 
shared between the pool every day. So if you own, say, 1% of the pool, you're gonna get 150 tokens a day, which is an ROI, it works out to be, I mean, when it initially listed, uh, the value of the token, it worked out to be a 200% ROI per annum if the token maintained its value. Right now, it's up to about 400%. So that might sound a bit crazy. However, just remember that scheme isn't always going to be running. That was an initial thing done by the team to support people who supported the token. So the idea is that if you provide liquidity to Uniswap and you support the team, they will obviously airdrop you as, a, as an incentive. So let's do some maths on how that would work. If you wanted to own 1% of the liquidity pool at time of recording, you would need to invest about 8,000 US dollars, which is about $4,000 in Ethereum and about $4,000 in Aleph. You would receive about 150 tokens from as, a, as an airdrop from Aleph every day, which is about $45 at the time of writing, plus, plus you would receive Uniswap fees. At the moment, you know, the liquidity, the, the fees are quite high, as in there's a lot of volume going through the contract, which is about $47 at an ROI of about $92 a day. So on $8,000, that's roughly about 1.15% daily. 30% a month, 400% per annum. However, this is quite risky. I'm not saying that this is a stable investment. I'm not saying that this is something that I recommend you do. We're just looking at this as a hypothetical. So the reason why it's, it's not really, you know, you can't really hang your hat on it is because Uniswap volume for this token has ranged like daily volume has ranged between 9,000 US dollars and $1.5 million, which is where those really high fees of $4,700 a day are coming from. And that's uh, only been looking at the last five days. So it's a fairly significant range um, and it could have a massive impact on fees earned. So it's more about, I'm more talking about this so that you can understand how the liquidity pools work. Um, and that will obviously affect you know, as, as the price of LF changes, as liquidity changes, as um, the volatility changes and the volume traded changes, so will your return. So you've got to be careful. The only thing you can hang your hat on is that is that 15,000 a day reward shared between the pool. Okay, so the third way is that you can stake nulls tokens on their chain towards the Aleph project. So you get a combination of uh, bonus tokens similar to the to the Uniswap um, the Uniswap pool, and you also can uh, you also get a shares from the from the Nels chain. Roughly, it works out to be about 0.32 Aleph per day per 100 Nels tokens. Now, the minimum to stake is 2,000 Nels, which means you would need to invest roughly about 920 US dollars to to do the minimum, but you'd be returning about 2.1. Um, nulls tokens per day as a return. That's roughly about 0.2% per day, um, about 6.8% per month, and 82% annually. This is a far more stable way to earn tokens because you're not worrying about, I mean, obviously the, the price of the underlying ALF token is important, but your initial capital is a bit more secure because the nulls chain is a lot more, a lot less volatile rather, a lot more stable, a lot less volatile than Aleph. So it means your initial capital is quite safe, but you can earn those nulls tokens. And there are three ways you can earn. So that's the deal so far from where I sit. Um, I hope this was an interesting explainer. Now, I like the experiment. I want to talk about that again. I like the experiment that these guys have done with how they've started their project by building a community first that then converts stake rewards into tokens as a way to initially support the project. Um, meaning the team started out building on bootstrap funds and they actually started to build a product before they really shipped it to market and started to sort of, you know, go and do different types of fundraising. Um, by the way, they have still not done an ICO. Um, they haven't actually gone out and, and tried to raise money from the public or anything like that. It's mostly all being done by the system we've already talked about. So I think that as a, as a project, this is a really cool way to see how this will run out. Um, as it both protects the integrity of the project and it also means that people aren't necessarily going to be just you know buying at a really really cheap rate and then dumping on the public later when it's 10x or something so i think that's a really really interesting way of doing it building the product building the support building the community getting really cheap or not really cheap but getting bootstrap funds from early backers who actually believe in your project and then you then go to market with something that's useful. Now, the Aleph token is actually something that needs to be used to then by DAP providers to, to 
um, you know, to be used in the network. In the same way that at the moment, as I've mentioned in my last video, you need Ethereum to then do any transactions with smart contracts or transfers in the Ethereum blockchain. And those fees have gone up significantly because the network's being more utilized. I think the same idea is, is meant to be the same with Aleph. And by no means am I suggesting that the project is going to be as widespread as Ethereum, uh, by no means. So the project for me appears to be not that pump and dumpy um, or like it's going to be an exit scam, like a lot of these DeFi projects that are coming out that are just adding DeFi to their name and hoping for the best. I mean, the project in its in its current state has been worked on since last year. So we're not talking about someone who's just flipped the, flipped the, flipped the switch and decided now we're doing DeFi like a lot of projects are. Um, so this is actually quite interesting. So. Um, I don't obviously see it as a get rich quick either because the founders themselves have a vested interest in maintaining token value and they can't dump on the market because I mean there's um, you know they've been supported by real backers there's been no ICO they haven't sold a bunch of tokens to the public um, I think that's actually quite an interesting way but we'll see how this experiment plays out so I hope that was interesting if you've got any questions or comments or any other projects you'd like me to cover please include them below um, by the way, this is by no means investment advice. I'm not suggesting you go out and buy this thing. Uh, however, I just thought I'd do on a, a bit of a of what it is so that you can understand a bit more before making any decisions. Thank you so much and see you next time.